So perhaps the biggest misconception I see out there about men's style is that you need to be rich. You need to have a lot of clothing to look good. Gents, I'm here to tell you that that is not true. In fact, in today's video, I'm going to share with you a minimalist style philosophy that's going to enable you to build a wardrobe with more outfits, with less clothing, spending less money. You ready? Let's do this. Now, the style philosophy I'm about to share with you is deceptively simple, but don't let that fool you. In fact, most guys don't implement this and therefore go out there and buy a lot of clothing, spend a lot of money, but have nothing to wear. So, the style philosophy I'm talking about is known as the capsule wardrobe. It was first coined the word capsule wardrobe by Susie Fo in the 1970s, and the idea here was basics that could be mixed and matched. Then in the 1980s designer Donna Karen, she actually put out a set of clothing designed to be a capsule wardrobe for women. Now, menswear designers eventually stole the term and I think we've perfected it here at Real Men Real Style by breaking the capsule wardrobe into three parts. As you can see here with this simple Venn diagram, we've got direction, interchangeability, and quality. When you have all three of those things in your closet, you've got a capsule wardrobe, a set of clothing that's going to enable you to get more outfits from less clothing. Now, if you're watching this and thinking, well, that sounds not inspiring. That sounds like a boring wardrobe. Guys, stick around to the end of this video. I'm going to address specifically how to make sure your capsule wardrobe is not boring. And in fact, I'm going to have some lookbooks that you can check out so you can look at different combinations you can put together and how they would look on you. And with that being said, let's dive right into this. So, first up, Direction. What do we mean by this? The direction that you want to take this wardrobe. What message do you want to send with your image? So, the first factor here is what does your physical environment demand? We're talking about the weather. We're talking about where you live. If you're down in Miami, the way you dress, the way you put your wardrobe together is going to be very different than if you're over in Seattle, if you're up in Chicago, if you're over in New York City, if you're urban, if you are rural, you've got to take all of that into consideration whenever you're getting advice from somebody, whenever you're looking at pieces of clothing, you've got to say, you know what, is this going to suit my physical environment? I mean, if you're in Southern Cal, when it comes to outerwear, you really don't have as many options because you don't need the options. Pea coats, overcoats, I mean, they look great, but you probably don't need to add one to your wardrobe versus looking at headwear, spending a bit more on sunglasses. When it comes to casual, lightweight shoes for a warmer environment, that's where you want to maybe spend your money. If you're over in Chicago, you get the Four Seasons. In New York City, you're in an urban environment and you don't own a car. You're commuting, so you want to make sure you're spending more on footwear that's going to be very practical. At the same time, look good, but be easy to take care of. Next up, let's talk about your professional need. Are you blue collar? Are you white collar? Are you someone that works at home or you go into an office and you interact with clients on a daily basis? This is going to have a huge effect on are you going to go with more formal clothing, clothing that sends a message of confidence, or are you going to go for a little bit more casual clothing, clothing that can be laid back because you're just talking to people on the phone. That being said, you still want something that makes you feel good. And believe it or not, even with relaxed dress codes around the world, there are still professions, there are still positions in which the clothing you wear sends a signal of who you are. If you're a lawyer in a construction firm, it doesn't matter that everyone else in the construction firm dresses down. The thing is, you are the lawyer. You're making sure that everything is great in the contracts, these are multi-million dollar deals, you're expected to dress like an attorney. That being said, if you are a consultant and you travel a lot, you're over on the west coast, moving over into down south Texas where it gets hot and humid, yes, you want to have clothing you can pull off, maybe a jacket, but it is something when you go into that air-conditioned office and you're going to be around other consultants at McKinsey or Bain, you want to be able to have that blazer jacket, that sports jacket that you could put on to basically match them in their dress. Last but not least, let's talk about your personal style. This is where you bring something fun. You bring something unique into the combination and I think even in conservative environments, you can have fun. I actually knew a lawyer. He loved skulls and crossbones. He was a pirate guy and he actually had them on cufflinks. He had them on a ring. He felt it actually kind of sent a message of a little bit of intimidation. I don't know about that, but I do know that he had fun even in an environment in which a lot of people think that you can't. And this is the difference of, hey, yes, you may have to wear a suit. You may be required in your blue collar job to wear a uniform, but can you actually adjust it? Could you actually adjust 
adjust the fit on that uniform so it looks better on you. Can you actually really wear that suit? Yes, you need to wear a dark colored suit, but can you bring in a pinstripe? Can you bring in a set of pocket square? Can you have fun with the necktie instead of going with the necktie? Maybe bring in a bow tie because they're just as formal. The point is you can have fun and you can wear this clothing so it looks great on you and you feel like a million bucks. The next key concept in the capsule wardrobe is interchangeability. I've actually talked about this a lot on my channel, but in case you're not familiar with the concept of interchangeability, let me use today's sponsor, Anson Belt and Buckle, as an example. Right here, we've got three straps. I have three buckles. How many different combinations do you see? If you were to ask somebody on the street who's not familiar with this, they'd probably say three, and they would be wrong. There are actually nine belt combinations here. How? Because every single one of these buckles works with every single one of these straps. You can interchange this. And what is great about an interchangeable set of buckles like this and straps is that you get more combinations from less items. Therefore, you spend less money, but you get more possibilities, more different outfits that you can put together. Now, gents, if you've never heard of Anson Belt and Buckle, you are in for a treat. These guys have made the belt hole obsolete. What am I talking about? So the problem with the belt hole over time, actually just after a few wears, it starts to look worn. It just doesn't look good. With the micro adjust system they've got on the Anson belt and buckle system, you get not only a better fit, but it looks better. Even after wearing this thing for six months to a year, it just is a better looking belt. Right now, gents, using that link in the description of today's video, you're going to get the best deal on the web when you grab one of their box sets. In these box sets, you get to choose between two straps and three buckles or two buckles and three straps. Basically, six combinations. And if you're looking for a particular type of belt, maybe something really tough, check out their Invincibelt collection. These belts are going to be waterproof, scratch and wear resistant, antibacterial, and non-color transfer. And gents, they've got over 30,000 verified reviews, the vast majority being five star. That being said, I know the founders personally, and these guys stand behind their product. And they've got a great product, but let me tell you stories about, you know, I've had you guys reach out and say, one of my favorites, somebody cut the strap too short. Basically, if you don't know the strap, you cut it to fit you and they give you very clear instructions. But one guy got a little bit aggressive and he cut it too short right off. And he wrote Dave and said, hey man, I'm sorry, I need to just buy another strap. Can I buy it? And you send it to me. Dave, at no cost to this guy, send him another strap immediately. Why? Because this is a family run business that they take care of their customers. And you can't say that a lot about a lot of companies and that's why I love supporting Anson Belt and Buckle because Dave is a great friend of mine and I know that he will take care of you as a customer. So gents, if you're looking for a gift this Father's Day, look no farther than Anson Belt and Buckle. It looks great, comes in premium packaging. Again, use that link in the description of today's video. It's a limited time deal. This will save you money and you'll be able to get just a beautiful set. And even if you don't need to get a whole set, you can grab you know, the smaller ones that they've got the belt and the buckle combination. Seriously, gents, it's a no-brainer gift. It fits any guy. It's incredibly versatile. Just looks good. An easy decision right here. Again, gents, use that link in the description of today's video to get the best deal on the web when it comes to Anson Belt and Buckle. So going deeper on the idea of interchangeability, how do you make sure that the items that you're buying are all going to work together? One of the first things you want to do is make sure that you're going with the same level of formality. If in general you've determined the direction is going to be a bit dressier, you work in a banking institution, you're a consultant, you're a lawyer, you're wearing suits, then bringing in casual shoes is not going to be part of that particular capsule wardrobe. And you could have multiple capsule wardrobes, by the way. You can have one that's more casual, you can have a capsule wardrobe that is more formal. But assuming that we're sticking with one, you want to make sure that the formality level of the items is about the same. It sounds obvious, but so many times I see somebody falls in love with an item because it's on sale or it looks really good as an individual piece, but it's not going to work with the other items in their wardrobe. If you got a very casual wardrobe, it doesn't matter how much those dress shoes are on sale. You don't have anything to wear them with or any occasion, so skip them. Next up comes color. And this is where so many people fall in love with things that are a little bit shiny, things that draw a little bit of attention, things that they think have a bit of, wow, there's a pop to it. I got to bring that into my wardrobe. The reality is, gents, is that the vast majority of items in your wardrobe are going to be boring base colors. If you can compare it to painting, these are the colors that are basically just going to set the stage. We're talking white. That's going to be about 20% of your wardrobe. Gray is going to be about 18% of your wardrobe. Navy blue, 14% of your wardrobe. Black, 13% of your wardrobe. True blue, 12% of your wardrobe. Brown, 10% of your wardrobe. 
And right there, we're at 87% and we haven't thrown in really any bright colors, anything that stands out. Now, why go with all of those bland colors? Because they're easy to mix and match. They are easy to form the base. And believe it or not, those bright colors that a lot of people think are really fashionable, they like to draw attention with, it's like salt in seasoning. You don't have to add a whole lot to an outfit to make it pop. Now, with that remaining 13%, how would I fill it? I know for me personally, with my colors, with my complexion, 7% I'm going green. Why so much green? Well, that is one of my favorite colors and I just find that it's a nice way to fill my wardrobe with certain shirts, maybe a jumper here or there, a jacket here or there. Green is just something I gravitate towards. I then give purple about 2%, red about 2%, orange 1% and gold 1%. All that being said, again, you can change this up depending on your personal preference your complexion, colors that you know look great on you. There's probably a particular shade of a color that whenever you wear it, people compliment you, say, wow, that looks good on you. So, latch onto it. Again, green for me, olive green in particular was that particular color. That's why it's a big part of my wardrobe. So, find something that works and don't be afraid to repeat it. Now, we can't talk about colors without talking about patterns. In general, patterns I keep reserved when you're just starting off and you're building that capsule wardrobe at the beginning, especially when it comes to trousers when it comes to jackets, anything that's going to be a large expensive piece, you want to keep in general solid. That being said, once you've got a base of, hey, I've got three pairs of solid shoes, dark brown, medium brown, tan. I know I like browns. So, maybe you can go with the two-tone. Maybe you can go with something that brings in a little bit of suede in that with your fourth or fifth pair. When it comes to trousers though, I am very careful, very conservative here. I think that just go with solids the majority of the time. When it comes to patterns, the easiest place to bring them in, shirts and accessories. And the reason being is these you can take a little bit more risk with, you're going to usually own more of and they aren't as expensive as some of the core pieces I was talking about earlier like footwear, trousers, jackets, shirts. You can have a little bit of fun with that, especially stripes, small repeating patterns that almost look like a solid from a distance. Accessories, that's where you can bring in dots, paisleys, brighter colors. Another easy way to nail interchangeability is to stick with classic items. Some people yawn at classic items. I say that, you know what? If it was in style 30 years ago, it is still in style today. You can rest assured it's going to probably be in style 20 years from now. This allows you to spend a little bit more money on it or whenever you acquire the item to simply wear it with less concern that this is something that is going to be falling in and out. If you're going to be buying a classic item, try to buy it in its classic form. So, a blazer usually going to be in navy. There are some classic patterns when it comes to sports jacket. When it comes to jeans, we know that dark denim in you know that color right there you know is classic has been around for a long time and works with so many other items in your wardrobe leather jackets fatigue jackets jean jackets oxford shirts penny loafer shoes in a dark brown again these are classic items that we see again and again and when you add these into your wardrobe you can rest assured that they are going to work in various combinations and finally when it comes to interchangeability don't be afraid to color block this is where with a particular type of clothing you still Stick with a few colors. For me, when it comes to trousers, I'm going to go with dark blue, usually in denim. I'm going to go with grays and with tans. That way, I know that any type of shirt I wear that's going to be white is going to work with any of those combinations. Green jackets. I don't wear pretty much any green trousers because I know I keep the green in my jackets and it's going to work with a variety of my shirt combinations, which are usually white light blue mixing with those trousers, mixing with those jackets and that allows and gives me the freedom to be able to piece things together very easily. Now, of course, you don't need to stick with this 100%. I do have items in my wardrobe that break these rules but again, we're talking about the capsule wardrobe. The few items that are just easy to mix and match that you could walk into your closet blindfolded and still put together a good looking combination. Now, let's talk about quality. When it comes to quality, you should expect you're going to have to pay more to get better. Isn't always the case and there are ways around this but in general, when you buy quality, yes, you're going to cry once about the price but you are going to love it and it's going to look great on you and you're going to get your money's worth out of this item because it's going to last longer and particular items like shoes, like leather bags, those actually develop character. They Over time, they get better. When it comes to watches and certain accessories, these can actually increase in value over time. Now, one of the most common questions I hear about quality is, is there a way to get high quality at a low price? And the answer is yes. 
but it can be difficult. There are two things that you got to pay attention to here. First, your knowledge of what you're looking for of the products of style should be high. In addition, if you've got plenty of time, a high amount of knowledge, you can be on the lookout for some great deals and occasionally find them. You'll find certain businesses that are going out of business and they're having 50% off and you can spot that that is a quality sports jacket. You can spot that those are quality made shoes from a brand you respect. You can pick them up. Yes, they have a slight blemish. They were used. They were over in a thrift store. You can spot these things and realize those shoes can be rebuilt. There are many ways to be able to save money, but the vast majority of us are going to be taxed because we need something quick. We need something and we don't have maybe a deep knowledge of it. So, those things right there are going to, we're going to have to pay, yes, the almost the full retail for these a lot of times. That being said, even paying full retail for certain items can still be worth it if you understand the style theory of value. And that is basically the value is equal to the number of wares times the way it makes you feel divided by the price. An example of how this works in the real world, you got to make a choice. Go with the cheap suit for a hundred bucks or the expensive suit that's going to look good on you for 400. If you go with the cheap suit, you wear it once, you don't feel great about it, it sits in the back of your closet, you never wear that thing again. The cost to wear that suit one time was $100. The more expensive suit cost $400, but man, you got compliments all night. You start finding reasons to wear this thing. You're wearing, taking your, you know, your girl out on a date wearing this suit. You start showing up giving presentations in the suit. You find more weddings to attend in which you can wear this suit. You end up wearing that suit 40 times over the next couple years. Guess what? That was $10 a wear and this suit is still going strong after those 40 wears. Yes, which one was the better deal? Well, I think that that more expensive suit actually had a higher value because you got a lot more wear out of it. The point being is don't attribute an item's value with its price. Think about how many times you're going to wear this and how important it is to you the way the item is going to make you feel. That being said, in a capsule wardrobe, if I was just getting started, what items would I look to be spending the majority of my budget on? Well, it's going to be those high ticket items that are going to last. Maybe it's going to be that suit. It's going to be the footwear. If you already have a very casual wardrobe, but you really want a watch that you are going to be able to have for years, I'm not saying you got to go with a Rolex or a Tudor. You could just look at getting a really nice Seiko. Point being is don't be afraid to buy that item that yes, you're going to wince a little bit, but you know that that item is going to last you a decade or more. And speaking of accessories, let's talk about how to spice up the capsule wardrobe. I promised this at the beginning. I want to make sure I deliver. Have fun with your accessories. Your base wardrobe may be simple. I know for me, oftentimes it is shorts. It's going to be gray trousers. It's going to be jeans mixed in with a variety of navy shirts. But I have fun with my sunglasses. I've been bringing in a wide variety of hats. I've been having fun with other accessories like my watches. This is an area that you can bring in some color. You can bring in some style, some class. Maybe go with something that's classic. Spend a little bit more money. Find something that is a style that maybe, you know, Wayfarers for me have just been a lot of fun over the last summer. Also, Clubmaster sunglasses are just a nice combination. Point being is you can have fun with those accessories and spice up that capsule wardrobe that it doesn't have to be boring and at the end of the day just allows you to focus in on what you want to and send the message you want consistently without you having to think. And what about those lookbooks? What about some capsule wardrobe ideas? Guys, down in the description of today's video, I'm linking over to Real Men Real Style. I've got an entire article with a number of images set up so you can go check out the different capsule wardrobe ideas we put together for you. And what video to watch next? How about 10 clothing fit tricks that every guy needs to know? Seriously, do you know these? We'll find out by clicking on the video. Go check it out. It's a good one, guys. And yeah, if your clothing doesn't fit, it is a big no-no. So yeah, go check it out, guys. Good video and I'll see you in the next one.